Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Hassan is with all of you now. Um, I think we will start, we will wait uh, for, for other five minutes just for the rest of the people so that we can ensure the maximum number of candidates in this room. And then we will start our session for today. It's, um, it's a mixture between a classic session and extraordinary session. So the surprise will be at the end, we will start uh, primarily by discussing the, a, very, a very common uh, idea and very common station in the exam, the breaking bad news, just to give you some few tips and tricks about the uh, breaking bad news, then we will move to uh, a real practice in different ways, just to show all of you what is the best performance and how can you judge a candidate from your point of view as well as the examiner's point of view. So be ready, stay tuned, five minutes and we will start. Thank you.
Um, now, if the voice is clear and the screen is available to all of you, so just inform me on the chat room so that we can start. Excellent, Iman, excellent, Zobia, Salma, everyone. I would like to, yes, Nairuz, how are you? Uh, we are really missed you. I hope you are fine. Um, now, some people cannot join, and I'm, I don't know why, uh, but we still have a time to, we can join at any point uh, of the station. Dr. Helmi, are you uh, here in the room? Yes, hello, Dr. Mohammed. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you, Dr. Mohammed, in this free webinar. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Helmi, for joining me in this webinar. It's actually my uh, honor and pleasure, as well as to welcome all of our friends in this room. So, Helmi, can you take over the mic to start the breaking bad news, and then we will do a great job in the second part of the session, if you don't mind. Sure, sure, Dr. Mohammed. Yes, I, so, I, just, I just, yeah, I just want to say something prior to start the station. Um, I mean, the, the session of today. Now, people, part three MRCOG, it could be the easiest part of MRCOG. And it could be the hardest or toughest part. It depends on how much you are understanding what is the aim of the exam? You can make it like hell, and you can make it very easy, smooth, straightforward exam. You can pass from the first shot, and you can spend four, three, four times to pass the exam. So the, the game should be played like this. I need to know what is the aim of this exam. This exam is not to test your knowledge anymore. So if you will spend the 10 minutes speaking and giving a lot of information, you will fail. This exam is not to evaluate your skills, the medical skills. This exam is to evaluate by 80% your communication skills and how can you deal with difficult, strange, or emergency conditions. Put in the mind that it's really important to involve the patient safety as a priority for this exam to pass, okay? So sometimes, I will give you a very simple example. Sometimes you may be asked about a placenta previa case, okay? So a placenta previa, I can manage. I can manage myself. So I can... Uh, do classical opening session in the uterus. I can uh, deliver the baby, waiting for spontaneous expulsion of the placenta, giving oxytocin, giving methergine, and then doing massage. Sometimes I can do suturing in the bed if the bed is still bl bloody. I can do um, uh, modified b lens sutures, ligation of uterine art. I can do many things. If this will be your answer in part two, you will pass. But if this is your answer in part three, you will gain a big zero, okay? Because you did, don't put the patient safety in front of your eyes. At this moment, the answer is very easy. If the case is stable and accidentally discovered as placenta previa inside 
the operative field, I will stop procedure and calling my consultant. This is the answer. And then you have to use the same technique in almost 100% of the cases or the scenarios in the exam, unless you have to manage emergency situation like short the dystocia, maternal collapse, and so on. Otherwise, in elective cases, there is no need to give a final decision in any station. It's just like we have multiple options of management, one, two, three, four. I will give you some information regarding this. I will prepare for further appointment to my consultant and we will meet again. It's more than enough. Don't direct the patient to one option ever, okay? And it's critically important to, um, it's critically important to follow the patient's concerns. If the patient is BMS, now I have many options of treatment. Now, for example, the combined pills may be a good option. No, doctor, please. I would like to avoid any hormonal treatment. The good competent candidate will say, yeah, that's fine. I, I respect your wish. Uh, can I know why you are so weird and so concerned about hormonal treatment? Yes, doctor, my mother passed away because of breast cancer. So I'm really worried about using any hormonal treatment. I appreciate, and I'm really sorry for that. So the other option will be what is called SSRIs. It's a kind of antidepressants medications which are effectively managing and controlling your symptoms. The poor candidate will say, why? Hormonal treatment is very effective. Yeah, but believe me, it's very effective. Please, doctor, I would like to avoid it. Why? We can use minimal doses. I can use different kinds. We can do estrogen patch rather than oral pills. Now you are wasting your time, losing marks, and you will never satisfy the patient. So it's critically important to follow the patient's concerns, not your delusions. I'm always saying that. Every one of us, me, all of you, Dr. Helmi, anybody, we are sometimes have some delusions in our minds. <laughs> so if you let the delusions guiding you, you will fail, okay? So this is just a general advice regarding the practice. Dr. Helmi will show you the, the difficult part of breaking bad news. And then we will be back again to discuss many points. Thank you, Helmi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for this great advice. And actually, I would like to say also from my personal experience that I, I have followed a very great advice from Dr. Mohammed. Once he said before I take my exam that you should be a good listener to pass this exam. So you have to listen to the patient and you have to address the patient concerns. That's the main aim of part three exam, okay? And by the way, you have to adjust your knowledge according to the situation. As Dr. Muhammad said, you are not here to be tested of your background knowledge. You are tested mainly to how to communicate with the patient and deal with the current situation. And also let me, give an example like Dr. Muhammad said about the premenstrual syndrome and the hormonal treatment and taking the SSRI inhibitors uh, and uh, such kind of medicines. For example, if you are facing like or dealing with a young patient who is telling you that she's wishing to get pregnant, okay, and, but she is suffering from PMS and she is worried, you know, to be uh, you know, um, maybe she's suffering. She's maybe have false thoughts that may she, she may suffer uh, uh, in her pregnancy or she won't be able to deal with her kids after that because she got so nervous and anxious, you know. So you have to adjust the, you know, lines of treatment according to the current situation. You can't tell this patient that I'm going to give you a GNRH, in, okay? 
I'm going, I'm not going to give her a gene or H uh, uh, analog, okay? Or like, for example, to discuss hysterectomy with such kind of patients. So you have to adjust your knowledge according to the situation. That's how to make use of the 10 minutes you have. For example, also, if you are suffering uh, or you are dealing with a patient suffering from ectopic pregnancy, and you know from the notes of the patient that this patient is not candidate for methotrexate therapy. So once you discuss with, with her the treatment options, you don't have to waste a lot of time in discussing the methotrexate, the dose, the, tide, the side effects. Why? She won't take that treatment. That's not suitable for her. So you are going to give her just a hint that there is a medical treatment that won't suit you in such situation. And we have to proceed for surgery. And then you have to give more details in or regarding the surgery and the types of the surgery are going to do. So that's how to deal with a part three station. And we will tackle now one of the situations that is, you know, almost always asked in the exam, one of the methods of communication with a patient, which is the breaking of bad news. So breaking bad news is one of the methods or the ways of communication in which, you know, the station will depend mainly and most of the mark will go to how to try to, you know, pave a way to a dialogue, you know, for that patient, how to are going to give her this information in a suitable way. And most of the marks of the station will go to that part. You are going to mix, yes, your background knowledge, and you are going to uh, 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 have a history taking or information gathering, yes, that's all will be marked in the exam, but the major part of the mark will be on the way you communicate with the patient. And that's very important. So even in our real life, you don't sit with the patient, tell her that she has cancer, for example, or she's having ectopic pregnancy, because most of these stations of breaking bad news is, you know, against the patient expectations. Usually the patient is expecting something, you know, and you're going to shock her with another thing. If she's having like, for example, uh, uh, an ovarian cyst or a tumor, and she know from the preoperative investigations that most likely things will go for a penine lesion and something, or suddenly you discovered after the surgery that or doing the histopathology that she is having, she's having a malignant issue. So how you are going to inform her about this. Also, if a patient is happy for getting pregnant, and usually some stations, by the way, if uh, uh, in some stations which would deal with some like ectopic pregnancy or miscarriage, the rule player's instruction include that she will show her happiness of having a pregnancy. And now we are going to shock her that her pregnancy ended up with miscarriage, for example, or that's unhealthy pregnancy, like ectopic pregnancy. So how you are going to deliver such kind of news to that patient. So this kind of stations need to be very smart because you have to make something. You have to be showing empathy with the patient. So your feelings should be empathetic toward the patient. But at the same time, you have to be honest and neutral regarding your information. You, you don't have to give false hope for the patient. You don't have to give her you know, a, 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 a wrong information just to make it like simple for her or make the situation easier for her. No, you have to be honest for all the information you are going to give to the patient because you are going to discuss with her all the consequences of her condition to give her the time and the uh, way or the right way to think what she, she is going to do after that. But at the same time, your feelings should show empathy. Your reactions should show empathy to the patient and you should give her the time to absorb these bad news. 
or absorb this shock. So that's how to you know, uh, approach a case of breaking mad news. So as Dr. Muhammad Hassan said that this kind of stations usually test your ability to counsel a patient and deliver for her some bad news. And usually the scenario will be with no doubt about the diagnosis. You have a certain diagnosis, the patient is not expecting at all this diagnosis, and you have to deliver these bad news for her. So the situation is application of knowledge plus experience. And the experience here is how to deal with a patient, is how to communicate with a patient in the proper way. So I would like to ask you, or any one of you, assuming that you sit with a patient, you did some information gathering, and now you are going to inform the patient these bad news. Can anyone tell me how will be the opening sentence? How will be the intro of these bad news? Can anyone tell me? Yes, first we have Can to I check her background knowledge first, that she, she knows anything about this. Yes. Yeah, then, then, then I'll, I'll explain that like uh, I'm talking with the patient. Hello? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Yeah, so I'll explain like uh, I'm talking with the patient now. No, yes, yes, assume that you are talking to the patient. How are we going okay. to inform her? Okay. Uh, hello, Sarah. Um, uh, there is uh, some concern with this um, uh, your report. So uh, do you have anybody with you today? Yes. So first, that's great. You ask it about someone to be with her. Okay. So that's very important. Some support with her may be of very great benefit. Yes. So um, uh, I have some uh, uh, news to tell you, but do you want me to call someone to be with you in such situation or in, in, in current consultation, for example, she will tell you, no, of course she will tell you in the exam, no, I don't have, but you can tell me doctor what's going on, okay? So you are going to tell her, unfortunately, I have some unpleasing news. I have some bad news to inform you that yeah. so, your situation goes like, 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 okay? So yeah. of course, after that, what you expect, the patient will do a reaction, okay? The patient yeah. in such way will do a reaction. And that's by the way, also is written in the rule players, you know, uh, uh, instructions. She might stop talking. She might try to cry, okay? Yeah. She will sh show you some way of shock or that she is uh, unable to absorb the information. So you have to give her all the time. Yeah. Then you have to ask her, shall I proceed or not, yeah. okay? Then I can tell Even that. Yeah, yes. Sorry, sorry that uh, with your name, NHS number, and date of birth, I can uh, confirm that I don't have good news for you. That's also another then, way. Yeah. Then she will ask me that uh, why, doctor, what happened? Then I can explain that uh, actually your uh, that tissue sampling report it says that uh, you have cancer in your own. Yes, exactly. Then I have to pause. So, yeah, yes. Thank you. So, so yes. If the patient start to cry or something, you have to wait until the patient absorb the uh, uh, shock, and then you have before to proceed. Before proceeding to talk, you have to ask her first or take the permission. Do you want me to complete talking, or do you want me to complete the consultation? Even in sometimes in the face to face exam. If you have like, uh, you can offer her a tissue, you know, to, to wipe her, you know, tears and so. So that's kind of communication between the patient. So that's, that's the point here. Even in such stations or most of these stations, you are going to have a lay examiner. The lay examiner is a second examiner who will give extra marks about the method of communication between you and the patient. Also, again, after 
she stopped crying and you start to talk again about the, 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 the situation, you can also again say that you are sorry to be a peer of such bad news. But then from this point, you have to be honest. From this point, you have to be honest about all the information you are going to give the patient because the patient will then decide which management plan she will go with. Of course, you are going to give her different management plans according to the, the station. And then you, at the end, will not reach a final management plan. You are going to give her another appointment with a consultant or a multidisciplinary team as uh, according to the situation, or even she can discuss with her partner, with her family, what she, what she is going to do in the further management of her situation. So if you go through this station by that way, you are going to pass definitely, okay? So we can summarize that we have to pay a way for a dialogue to the patient. And this depends on summarizing the condition of the patient. This involves a mixture of history taking, a quick information gathering, because most of these patients, you know, you already have her notes and you know a lot about her. So you are going to make a quick information gathering, and then you are going to summarize the situation leading to this consultation. For example, if the patient is having an ovarian tumor or ovarian cyst and she had a surgery, and then the histopathology showed that she is having a cancer, you are going to tell her as a summary that you were diagnosed with an ovarian cyst and a surgery was done. In the surgery, we have done one, two, three, four points, and then we send the sample to for histopathology and we got your results. Before discussing your results, do you want me to call someone to be with you? In that way, okay, in that way or in that arrangement, this will make the consultation smooth and you will, have, you will be able to deal with that situation. So you have to remember that a decision does not need to be taken by the end of the station. You have to discuss with her different treatment options, and then you, you are going to offer her further appointment with your consultant. Also, you can offer her to discuss with her family member if you have different equivocal management options that all of them are like each other and she can take one of them, then she can discuss with her family. And a very good statement by Dr. Mohammed Hassan that you have to follow the rule player agenda rather than following your delusions. And that's something I really experienced in my exam, okay? So at the point I felt that I don't remember what to say, or maybe some, you know, during the exam stress, sometimes you feel like, the information have gone from your mind, okay? Or you 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 lost the temp, or you lost you lost the rhythm you are uh, following, or the uh, uh, agenda you are following. Then simply I ask the patient, do you want to ask me any question? So the role player will ask you. It will give you a hint on how to proceed more in such stage. So listening more than talking is a golden key to success. So some of the pitfalls which uh, uh, occurs during the station or the exam that you fail to read the question properly. It's very important to read the brief before the station and know exactly what are the patient concerns and then try to discuss or focus on these concerns, okay? Usually remember that this is not like a, a, a memorizing competition. The examiner doesn't want to uh, you know, test your ability to memorize information and to uh, read the guidelines by heart. That's not the aim of part three exam. That's you have to you know, uh, optimize your information according to the station. In breaking bad news, you have to you know, start that early better than late. I mean that you don't have to waste a lot of time in the information gathering and so on. And then at the end of the station, you start to give her the bad news because most of the station depend on what will happen after you give her the bad news, not before, okay? Because 
the patient will do a reaction and then this will take or consume some time until she starts again talking or discussing with you. So the summary before giving the bad news should be quick. You don't, you don't have to waste a lot of minutes before giving her the bad news because this station depends mainly on what will happen before after giving her these news. And you have to expect any reaction by the role player. You have to be very calm in such situation because the role player is having instructions to test your nerves, okay? So if you stay calm, if you stay, you know, uh, focused on your target, then the station will pass smoothly. If you start to uh, uh, feel nervous or feel anxious about her reaction, or for example, sometimes, you know, she may have some exaggerated reaction and you are, you know, uh, um, very worried about the matter of time, okay? So you need to talk quickly, you want to finish your station, so interrupt her, okay? And uh, this will give a very bad feedback about you, okay? Because, you know, uh, as I'm going to show you in a while, uh, that most of the mark will be upon how to deal with the patient, okay? Even if you won't be able to discuss all the management options in a detailed way, you don't have to do that, by the way. You have to give just a very summarized management plan, and then you have to uh, uh, offer her another appointment with the consultant. So don't worry about the time because the, the role player has instructions. And at that point, or at that time, that reaction by the role player, you are going to find that the examiner and the lay examiner, both of them are focusing on you. They are seeing what are going to be your reactions. So in every station in part, you have to be ready. You have to be smart and smart, as I told you, by optimizing your information according to the station. And you have to be confident through all the stations and also be formal, okay? Don't forget that. Don't make your empathy makes you like deal with the patient as a relative or something, you know, uh, uh, like her friend or something like that. No, as I told you, you have to be, yes, your emotions should be empathetic toward the patient, but your information should be neutral, should be honest to give her the proper management plan. So I hope I summarized the most important points regarding the, the uh, breaking bad news and let me show you a sample. And of course, I hope Dr. Muhammad Hassan is here also to give you his feedback in this station. But yes, uh, I, yes, Hemi. I just would like to add something. You know, yes. uh, the, the major pitfalls maybe that candidates may fall in in, the, in in breaking bad news station, they are doing too much signposting, you know. Um, so uh, uh, you are here alone. Can we wait for another one to join you? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, do you feel that you are ready to hear some bad news? Uh, you would like me to ask the uh, nurse to join you in this discussion? Uh, would you like to uh, postpone the appointment to, to another time? All of these many, many signposting for warning signs, I mean warning points before this close, the information is definitely not ideal. You have to just give a very small mention that you're going to do a bad job and then you have to disclose the information directly. Don't spend a lot of time preparing the patient for the bad news because it's really lead to increasing the anxiety of the patient. Now, let me ask all of you a very important question. What do you think is better? To, to start the station by breaking the bad news and then start to take uh, information from the patient, like history or something, or to start classically the station with history taking and after that, breaking the bad news. What do you think? is better and why? Start, Iman said starting breaking bad news. Nairo said history first. Breaking yeah. bad news, Salma. Uh, okay. 
now the question is seems to be confusing now tell me yes open your mic and tell me what would you like sir, to say sir it's better to ask the role player that uh, that whether she wants to uh, disclose the news first or whether like it's okay if i ask you a few questions first it could be done no problems but i think i will give you my opinion both are right but it depends on the scenario itself if the scenario said the patient has no idea about the results so she will be comfortable to uh, uh, listen to your questions and to answer questions and then you can start by history first but if the patient is anxious she is suspecting something bad and she's really worried about the results from the scenario so you have to start by breaking bad news because in this situation if you start taking history first the patient will stop you and say doctor please i just would like to know what is my result i'm really anxious now she is breaking your plan for this station okay so this is what i would like this is the message i would like to to tell all of you about we are not machines we are not robots in this exam we are dealing with the situation according to the scenario so you have to be flexible both are right but it depends on the scenario itself the last thing i would like to say is uh please if you are in would you please explain what history should I take in such cases? It depends for breaking bad news. It depends. Is it a gynae case or ops case? For example, if the, the scenario is regarding a, a congenital anomaly scan showed an encephaly. This is a breaking bad news, but it's related to obstetrics. Okay. While sc screening cervical program results is related to the gynae. Okay, ovarian mass after removal, it's malignant in nature, it's a gynae. So it depends on the, the scenario itself, Dr. Im. Okay, like should I ask about the po po post operative condition? If the patient had a surgery for ovarian cyst removal and the histopathology came back, it's malignant. So I have to ask about how was the uh, post operative time the recovery is there any additional symptoms of course you have that's why i'm always saying it depends on the scenario itself so you should be flexible with the scenario in 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 for example congenital anomaly scanning i, I think i will ask about the ops history in details any medical disorders uh family history of genetic disorders okay uh, sometimes i may ask about psychological status and how what, what is it, the support because I, I the patient will suffer a lot after telling her about this information and so on i will never ask the same question most probably regarding the uh the uh, gynecology situation for example okay now my last advice is in breaking bad news this is a very you start the station most of you 99 percent of candidates starting the station by hi my doctor my name is dr hassan i am one of the senior doctors in the clinic may i confirm your name and age please yes doctor my name is karen woods i'm 38 thank you so what would you like me to call you yeah karen is fine okay karen so we will uh, uh discuss your results unfortunately it's a cancer is it the ideal way to start the discussion like this when you are starting the discussion very friendly like this you gave the patient a false sensation of security the doctor is very friendly it's very he's very nice i think the results are fine you should be formal what is that means it means my name is dr hassan i'm senior doctor in the clinic uh i just would like to check your name and age mrs karen woods 38 am i right yes so mrs woods 
I think you are here today to discuss the results of your smear. Am I right? Mrs. Woods. She is not Mrs. Karen. She is not Karen. She is not anything rather than Mrs. Woods. You should be formal. This formality in discussion is a part of the sign posting for breaking bad news. So this is my advice, simple advice, beside what Dr. Helmi said. Thank you so much, Helmi, for uh, a very good explanation for the breaking bad news. And now we, Helmi will show you almost the marking sheet of breaking bad news station. Go ahead, Helmi, please. Yes, Dr. Muhammad. Just I, I remember something also I want to say before moving to the station, okay? The flexibility, okay? That's a very important issue, okay? In the exam, by the way, you might, you know, like you are putting a certain plan to follow in the station, and then you find that the rule player ruined this plan completely. How? And even this is, you know, maybe obvious in you know the, the latest stations of the exam for example starting from station 9 10 11 and 12 you know mostly the rule player and of course the rule player at the end she's a human being of course and she sometimes become tired of you know making like the stations and multiple stations with many candidates so sometimes sometimes and i have noticed that myself in the exam once you start talking with the rule player, okay, and you ask her about her concerns, she gave you, you know most of the history. She can give you the current her the current complaint, and also she can give you some hints about her medical history. And sometimes, and I have faced that she told you that she's a smoker and something like that. So you don't have to repeat all that again in the information gathering. That's a waste of time. Once she gave you this information, then you have just to, you know, complete the other information you want to have, then proceed for the consultation. Repeating again and again the same questions can also, you know, uh, the role player can give you some, you know, uh, angry reactions. But I told you, doctor, that I am smoker, for example, and I smoke like uh, two, uh, one pack in the week or something like that. So that's also something related to the flexibility, you know. Like Dr. Muhammad said, we are not robots. You have to adjust the information according to the station. So the uh, that's an example. We are not, we are not going to discuss this uh, station at the performance, but we are just showing you one of these stations of breaking bad news, and that's a candidate's instructions. You are about to see Mrs. Anne Cunningham, a 66-year-old lady who underwent a laparotomy for a complex ovarian mass seven days ago. Her preoperative CM125 level was 40. Preoperative X-ray chest and MRI scan did not show any extra ovarian spread. A laparotomy, there was minimal ascites, but no other evidence of extra ovarian spread. You performed a total abdominal hysterectomy, peritoneal washing, and infracolic omentectomy. Histology has shown moderately differentiated serous cyst adenocarcinoma with evidence of microscopic deposits in the omentum. Peritoneal washings showed clusters of adenocarcinoma cells, which is FIGO stage 3A. She was aware of the possibility of cancer, but was told that it was almost certainly benign because of almost normal CA125. And that's what I meant at the start of the station that usually the news will come against the patient's expectations or hope. So that's what makes the absorption of the news difficult. She is still an inpatient. She has recovered well from her surgery and is awaiting discharge. So you have to counsel her regarding the diagnosis and further management. So that's the main aim of the station, to counsel her regarding the diagnosis and further management. So now we have a patient who is inpatient. She already did a surgery. So here I won't, you know, uh, waste a lot of time in information gathering, like what was your complaint and when did that complaint start, for example? No, she already had a complaint. She already was diagnosed with an ovarian mass and uh, uh, the surgery was done. 
So all you can do is, you know, asking her about the post uh, uh, operative recovery and also make a, a small summary, summary of the issue, like a signposting until you give her the bad news. See, look at the, the rule player's instruction. You are Mrs. Anne Cunningham, 66. You underwent a laparotomy for a complex ovarian mass seven days ago. Your preoperative CA 125 level was 40. You have recovered well. You are ready to go home. You live alone and have friends who will support you over next few weeks. The hospital has arranged meals or meals for you. Your 30 year old daughter lives in Australia. You are waiting for the report from your operation. The surgeon told you that the likelihood of cancer was very low. Again, it's their expectation now are going to give her bad news. You are hoping that you would not need chemotherapy as you hate the idea of losing her. When the candidate tell, tells you that the cyst was cancerous, you will feel shocked, disbelieving, frightened, and distressed. You will assume that this will kill you. You may cry or go silent for a few seconds. See how the instructions are given to the rule player. So the rule player also is having an agenda. Has the cancer spread anywhere? How long I'm going to live? Do I need any more treatment? Should I go privately? Will it be any quicker? Will my hair fall out? Do I need to tell my daughter? Is she at increased risk? So if you are talking too much, you are not going to give her the time to complete her agenda. And if she's not completing her agenda, she won't be satisfied. And you, you are not going to take the full mark in the station. So look at the marking sheet. That's the marking scheme. See here, if we zoom in like that, so the approach to the patient, including introduction, the eye contact, the body language. You have to perform that very well. You have to make a good eye-to-eye -eye contact. You have to summarize the events leading up to the present consultation. That's what's called the warning shots or the signposts before giving the diagnosis. Also check her background knowledge about the opera operation findings. Maybe she has some background knowledge or what are, are her expectations. And then ask if she would like anybody else to be present, such as a relative or a specialist nurse. Then look at the major mark here, okay? The information which would be given to the patient about the diagnosis. Th does so with embassy, compassion, no rush at all, allows time for assimilation, and also, don't forget this important advice, no medical jargon. You have to make sure that you are using terms that can be understandable by the patient. Then listen to the patient concerns. Now the patient will give you her concerns. She's afraid to die. She's afraid to lose her hair, for example, if she are going to take chemotherapy. You have to understand all that. You have to explain the stage and her need for chemotherapy. And that's also needs a multidisciplinary team discussion. That's communication with colleagues and also patient safety. You have to, you have to discuss the chemotherapy briefly and then arrange her appointment with an oncologist. Give her at the end of the station, the contact number, leaflets, specialist nurse visit. And also you don't have to reach a final management plan at the end of this consultation, as we mentioned before, so that's how the, the, the kind of such kind of stations are, are marked in the exam. Any more comments, Dr. Mohammed? Thank you so much, Dr. Helmi, for that. Uh, and I think it's somehow now clear for most of our friends, how can you deal with breaking bad news? I think uh, it is. Am I right? Any queries, any questions would like to share with us? We are ready to, to answer. I think it's, it's crystal clear. Yes, yes, exactly. So. Excuse me, Dr. Uh, Hassan. Can I yes. ask you a question? Sh sure. Uh, for breaking bad news, do you think we can uh, give uh, two warning shot or one warning shot is enough? You know, uh, uh, what I always say, uh, one is enough. And if you are trained to just giving two warning signs before 
disclose the information, it's okay, but don't make it too long as much as you can. You have just to give one warning sign and then go directly to say the diagnosis frankly, okay? Don't try yeah. to show extra empathy. You know the differences between empathy and sympathy. Empathy is important. Sympathy is not preferable, okay? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Now Aisha is asking, Amna is asking first. So first, breaking bad news, then history. I almost accept this way uh, in, in most of cases. However, if the patient has no idea and she is extremely calm and not expecting bad things, you can start with history taking rapidly and then breaking the bad news. But if she is anxious or she is really keen to know the results, uh, uh, so 100% you should break in the bad news first. Now, Aisha is asking if all history has provided and the patient uh, and patient is only to discuss her MDT decision, how to proceed, what points to touch in history. Now, this is not a breaking bad news. It means that the patient has already passed through the breaking bad news and she is now would like just to discuss the management plan by the MDT and you will offer her this option. So this is not a breaking bad news. Now, in most of cases, uh, if the history is required in this station, it will be asked, uh, 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 it would be a question in the scenario. So the, the scenario will say, take relevant history from the case. Now you have to take history. Sometimes history is not required in such stations. So you should bypass the history and going directly to discuss the management plan. So it depends on the scenario. What points to touch in history? If the case again is a cancer, a cancer, so you have to follow the scheme in my mind of oncology. What is this scheme? The scheme will be uh, uh, in the history taking the analysis of complaint in details, related symptoms to the complaint, and then going for medical surgical history, and then going for smears, maybe family history, of course, is critically important, and any social habits. This is more than enough, no need to. Now, sometimes if the patient is young age, I have to ask her about ops history and fertility wishes. Otherwise, no need for them. Uh, any need to mention follow-up? No, rule players score, let, let, it, let it out. It's, it's sometimes this now is replaced by the lay examiner score, okay? Now in the new format, this is the lay examiner score, okay? Now she's asking, one, one of our friends is asking about any need to mention follow-up, sir. Of course, the follow-up, the further appointment is always necessary in 90% of the cases, okay? Now, let me, let me comment on you, Salma. What is, what is the need to ask about allergies? Is it a relevant question? If you would like to break a bad news, for example, uh, a, a abnormal cervical smear or CIN, is it important to ask about allergy? If she has any, you know, um, any allergy to any medication when uh, we are prescribing, like she has pain, maybe with this, uh, any cancer, she has pain. So I'll prescribe maybe pain relief. So she has allergy to any pain relief, like methanific acid or any uh, pain relief she has allergy. We don't know. Okay. So if you ask about allergy, you add another value to your question, but most probably, Allergy is not an asterisk point in the exam. I mean, it is not, uh, if you miss the allergy at this point, you will never lose marks. If you ask it about it, it's fine. Now, this is another entity to be discussed with all of you about how can we do successful information gathering? Because I know that most of people are uh, training people to, to take a full history. I think this is Helmi, right? Am I right? They, they are asking 
uh, uh, candidates to take full history in all cases, just in case to cover yes. all points. And yes, believe exactly. me, this is, this is extremely wrong. Why? Because if you ask it everything, I will give you borderline. Why? I asked it about everything. Yes, you did. But for my point of view, you are not covering the ideal question point. I asked you to take relevant history. If you ask it everything, it means the candidate cannot realize the relevant points. I will give you borderline, unfortunately. So this is a very common condition in the exam. I asked everything. Now, I'm always saying this, Helmi. In this scenario in front of you, in this scenario, a patient with cancer, I don't know what is her age, but for example, 70 years old, and she is diagnosed with ovarian cancer. So you are taking history and, and then find the people saying, for example, uh, yes, she is 66 years old with ovarian cancer. And then when you are taking history, I can find the candidate asking her, so any social habits of uh, a smoker? No, uh, alcohol drinking? No, yeah, occasionally. Uh, yeah, any recreational drugs? Now, this is funny question. This is extremely funny question. Not only irrelevant, it's funny. If you ask a woman 66, 70 years old about recreational drugs in her situation, this is definitely a funny question. I will smile in the exam. It's like a patient coming for unexplained infertility for the last five years or three years, she's seeking pregnancy, and then you ask her, do you are using any contraceptions? She is looking for a baby. And then you are asking her about contraceptions. So it's really dangerous to do this mistake in information gathering. It's not like this. You have to prepare your mind. And this is the part of the training. You have to prepare your mind. What are the relevant questions that you should never miss in each module? Most probably, I need to ask about these points. If I missed something, mostly it will never affect my mind because I covered the most important things. But if I ask it everything, 100%, I will give you borderline. You will never gain pass in this, in this, in this domain, okay? So it's really important to be uh, um, focused and targeted to the scenario adherent to the scenario, okay? So I will, I will show you another thing. Um, thank you, Helm, you can close streaming. I will start for myself, I'm, I'm from my side. Okay. Yes, just a second, please. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. We will t take you, me and Dr. Helmi now to another, another thing, just to play a game with you, just to, <laughs> to have fun. So we choose a very common station, a very common station in the exam regarding the management of labor. By the way, the module of management of labor and management of delivery, I, I suggest that it's the most important two modules in the exam. You have to pass them. You have to give them the maximum and you have to pass them. Why? Because management of labor and management of delivery is the daily practice of UK trainees. So almost 100% of UK trainees will gain maximum mark in these stations. So if you lose one of them, I suggest you will be eliminated from the exam. You will be failed in the exam. So if you did well, in management of labor, management of delivery, I can say that <coughs> the competition will be very fair between you and UK trainees in the almost 12 remnant stations because they are obviously superior than overseas candidates in these two modules. Otherwise, 
maybe the overseas candidates are more strong than UK trainees in other modules. So we will play the game right now. I will tell you some important things regarding management of labor and management of delivery. However, they are mainly depending on the negotiation skills. Now we talked about breaking bad news skills. Now I will tell you about negotiation skills. How can you convince the patient by something you want against her wish in a very sensitive way and to change the scenario to your side, okay? A patient is coming asking for a cesarean section. There is no indication for cesarean section. I need to convince her by normal delivery. How can I do that? A patient is coming asking for um, V back, for example. She is previous four cesarean sections. How can I tell her that there is no way for V back and I have to go for a cesarean section? She's really against that. So this is the negotiation skills. The golden key rules for negotiation skills, put them in your mind. Don't refuse her wish ever. Now, listen to me, my friends. If you, uh, for example, came to Dr. Hassan and you said, Dr. Hassan, I would like to do something in this patient. What do you think? What the hell you are talking about? It's extremely stupid. Never, never to do that. What is your feeling at this point? I hate Dr. Hassan. I would like to kill Dr. Hassan. Am I right? He's too much rude and tough. Now, on the other hand, if I said, even if you said rubbish, I would say, yeah, this is a good idea. I like your way in thinking. So just tell me why you choose this. Now, your feeling is completely different. You will feel that, oh, Dr. Hassan is too much caring about my idea. I, I will try to explain for him why I choose this. And then Dr. Hassan will start carefully to explore why you choose this option. Maybe something hidden behind this option. I need to explore it. And then I will follow Dr. Hassan will follow the right sequence of providing information. I will agree with your option, discussing the advantages of your option, but I will discuss as well the disadvantages of your option. Then I will give you the disadvantages of my options. <clears throat> and finally, I will close the discussion by the advantages of my option. So it's called the sandwich technique. The sandwich technique, the first upper layer is this, uh, sorry, advantages. You will start by advantages of the patient's option and close the discussion by advantages of your option. And in between the disadvantages of both options this sandwich technique and negotiation skills. It's really important to push the patient's mind towards what you want. And always, as we said, keep the discussion open. Further appointment with in provided information and no need to take the decision right now, except of course, if we are in the management of delivery and the patient, for example, in the second stage of labor, and we need to deliver her as, as soon as possible. So at this point, you have to take the decision and consent right now. Otherwise, you have no other choices, no other choices to negotiate rather than this, because the station may be turned into a hell. The patient will refuse your option, the patient will attack you and the station will be damaged, okay? This is what we will see right now together. This is a station. Please, everyone, read the station in one minute. And uh, I will be 
Lisa Green, Dr. Helmy will be the candidate. And I don't know what he will do actually, but I will lead the judgment for all of you. Dr. Helmy, please be ready. Okay. The station will be managed in eight minutes, and then you can start when you are ready, Dr. Halmi. Dr. Iman, actually, the whole exam is simple. The whole stations are simple. The simplicity, it depends on your vision. You, uh, you know, conception of ideas. And most of cases, uh, 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 the, believe that 13 stations out of 14 are recurrent, repeat stations. One station maximally, in, in, in every circuit is extremely strange sometimes or carrying a very difficult clue. But otherwise, uh, the stations are easy. Now, um, now it's very important to notice that um, it's a really easy station, but do you think this station is easy? Let me show you how it could be very difficult if you used the bad approach in managing the patient. Salma, why disadvantages are in between? I starting, I'm usually starting the discussion by advantages of wish just to gain her interest and making her trusting me. So she will start to listen. And I will close the discussion with my advantages to be the last thing printed in her mind. So subconsciously, she will be happy to follow the advantages of my option. It's a psychological game, Salma, okay? It's a psychological game. Everything carrying some clues of technique. Yes, Helmi, please start. Okay, let me just, you know, adjust the time, <laughs> okay? No problems, I, I, I did. Okay. Hello, I'm Dr. Mohammed, the ST5 in the clinic today. May I confirm your name and age, please? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Hi, my name is Lisa Green, I'm 25. And how do you like me to call you? Uh, yeah, Lisa's fine, thank you. Okay, Lisa, so I understand from your notes that this is your first pregnancy. You are 36 weeks now, and you are requesting a vaginal delivery, right? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Okay, so uh, do you know the results of your ultrasound scan? I, what I know that it, my baby's Botox is first. I, I mean, his bottom first, and um, I, I don't know what is that means exactly, but what I'm just aiming for is to have a vaginal delivery, a natural birth. This is my way in thinking, I, and I'm really hoping that. Okay, so before uh, discussing your concern, can I ask you a few questions to know more about you? Of course. Okay, so currently, do you have any kind of complaint like a vaginal bleeding, like a pain in your tummy? No, no, never experienced anything like this. Okay, so uh, in uh, your current pregnancy, did, did you make your blood tests? Yes, I had a blood test at the beginning of my pregnancy, and I think in the mid-pregnancy as well, 
repeated tests and all were normal. Okay, and did you do the anomaly scan and screening for Down syndrome? Yes, I think so. And both were normal as well. Yes, so do you take any kind of medications right now? Uh, no, just uh, the multivitamins prescribed my, by my GP. Okay, great. So otherwise you are fit and well? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please continue. Yes, otherwise you are fit and well? Now tell me that the, the voice, now the, va the voice is what, well, but it was interrupted before. So please repeat your question. Yes, otherwise you are fit and well, Lisa? Yes, I think so. Okay, do you have any kind of surgeries before? Yeah, I had a pancetomy when I was 15. Okay, do you have any drug allergy? I don't think so. Okay, so do you have any kind of family history of concern? Um, no, no, I don't think so as well. Okay, do you smoke? Yeah, I quit. Okay, do you drink alcohol? Um, no, I, I think occasionally. Okay, so do you have enough support at home? Yeah, I'm living my, with my partner, my boyfriend, and he's really supportive. That's great. So thank you so much for sharing your information. Thank and you. coming to concern, as you know that your baby lies, you know, bottom first or feet first inside your womb. And uh, that's not the normal presentation. Actually, usually most of the babies turn to be head first at the uh, uh, end of pregnancy, but in three to four in 100 women, the babies will remain in the bottom first uh, uh, position. Uh, so actually, uh, I think that vaginal delivery may carry some, you know, uh, uh, increased risk to your baby dying around the time of birth. Are you following me? Oh, oh no! Uh, I, I, I don't like to, you know, I, you would like to push me for a cesarean section, but I'm really interested in in the vaginal delivery, and I can take the risk. Yes, yes. I, I just want to tell you that you know the the the, the planned vaginal delivery for a breech presentation that carries some risk to you, baby, that it may cause some short term complications to your baby. And there is another, uh, um, you know, the strategy for management. Do you want me to explain? Uh, yeah, yes, maybe, but again, I'm insisting, you know. Okay, so we can think about a maneuver called external cephalic virgin. Do you hear about that before? Um, no. Okay, that is a maneuver that involves a gentle and firm pressure on your abdomen to help the baby to turn to be lying head first, okay? We can give you oh. a medication to relax the muscle of your uterus or your womb, okay, to uh, improve the chance of successing this maneuver. And this uh, uh, will be done inside a hospital because you might have an emergency cesarean section while we are doing this maneuver, like one, in uh, 200, there is a chance you need an emergency cesarean section because of a bleeding from the placenta or changes in your heart babies, on the heartbeats of oh, your baby. Yeah, now what, what is, is it, is it painful for me? Yeah, you might feel some pain or you might feel uncomfortable, but the uh, doctor or the healthcare professional will stop doing the maneuver if you experience severe pain. Am I clear so far? Yes, yeah, so, so if, if it failed to turn my baby, so I'm still insisting to have a breach, sorry, a, a, a vaginal delivery. Yes, we, if, if it fails, we might try the maneuver in another day. But if it's 
uh, it's failing, you know, uh, you, we have then to think about uh, plants vaginal delivery or plant cesarean section. But as I told you, uh, uh, the plant vaginal delivery may, might carry a risk to your baby, as, but it would be safer option for you. While if we do a plant cesarean section, this will be safer for your baby. But of course, a cesarean section might carry some risks uh, uh, to you, uh, like having problems in future pregnancies related to the placenta or to the repeated cesarean section. Also, uh, it may also increase the risk of stillbirth in first her pregnancies. Am I clear so far? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Time so, is over. Eight minutes. Now, I, I think I think these are the fastest ten minutes ever, Henry. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I experienced it. We are always <laughs> like this in the exam. You will spend 10 minutes, the fastest. So, yes, yes some, some, somehow the voice is not clear enough, Helmi. So, I would like to move to the participants. I will take Dr. Iman, who said this station may be easy. What do you think? regarding this candidate, I mean, of course, Dr. Helmi, uh, is he doing well or you have some comments? Tell me your points. If you are an examiner, you will give pass borderline fail to Dr. Helmi. Oh, well, I give myself for the information. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, mom, you're our mentor. <laughs> okay, for the information gathering, um, um, uh, I would say it's a borderline because yes. it took a uh, long time asking for uh, some unnecessary information. In fact, it was written clearly that her antenatal notes uh, had been reviewed and it's uneventful. Exactly, I like this answer. Why he is asking about the uh, scan and Down syndrome, which will already done, I mean, done for, for maybe six or seven months ago, and everything is documented and everything is clear and uneventful. So why he spent a lot of time asking rubbish questions? I'm sorry, Helmi. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I'm intended to, yes. <laughs> yes, I know that. This is the, a part of the... You know the play, but yes, you know yes. it's really it's really too much annoying to an examiner to hear to this rubbish. It's too much yes. annoying, and I think yes. he man is very uh, you know kind person to give you borderline. I will give you a fail because yes. you missed a oh, lot of points in the history. <laughs> okay, yes, yes, exactly. So please, Iman, continue. Yes. Okay. I would rather ask for uh, a clarification of her RH type. And if mm -hmm. she knows where is the plus the, her afterbirth location, is it in the front part or uh, at the uh, back of her uh, uh, womb? Because this would affect the external cephalic virgin outcome. Um, um, I would ask her for the time being if she has any uh, uh, pain or any bleeding, any water discharge. Um, I would uh, try to be um, like friendly if I ask her uh, about her if she did name her uh, her baby. So in the further discussion, I would call uh, the baby with his name. Um, and um, for the management, for the negotiation, in fact, I think that Dr. Helmi intendedly was not following your. Um, Exactly. Exactly. Now, that's why this is may explain why the rule player, I mean me, myself, was so much silly. I'm really a silly person. Okay. And he's trying to manipulate and I'm still insisting on vaginal delivery. Why? Because he didn't apply the appropriate approach in negotiation. He started talking like, I think it will be very risky to deliver you vaginally because of the bad first position. Okay, now, thank you. I will insist more and more on my decision. Now, he also did a major mistake. Jargon, now, lot of jargon. You know, it's, it's a kind of mistake. I agree with you, but you know, the major mistake was, anybody notice that the role player repeated 
more than one, two, three times, I'm insisting on vaginal delivery. Am I right? Yes. Why, Helmi, you didn't explore? Yeah. Explore. Yes. Because Why? I intended it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I believe you. I believe you. You, you <laughs> are MRCUG. So, of course, you, <laughs> you can do this station perfectly. But we, just to show the candidates yeah. what are the common pitfalls. Because in the stress of the exam, if you are not well trained on the approach, you will miss points. Now, I repeated more than two times, I'm insisting on vaginal delivery. If you discover, explored why, you will discover that my sister had a cesarean section six months ago, and unfortunately, the wound was infected, and her tummy was opened, and she uh -oh. re-entered theater one more time. Now, the plan, the management, the acting will be completely different. Why? Exactly. Because mm, I will show empathy. I will say, I'm sorry. Tell me what is her condition right now. I would like to reassure you that it's extremely uncommon to happen in cesarean section, but I can understand how much this is stressful for you. Now, I, I'm, I'm suggesting strongly that a, 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 a further appointment with a psychological counselor may be really beneficial for you. Now the plan is completely changed, but unfortunately you missed the clue of the station because you missed exploration of what is behind her wish. Mm -hmm. These are like steps following each other. If you missed one step in the technique, you will lose marks. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, so you know, I, yes, I, I want to just to say something. Okay. Uh, when I prepared the station, you know, I, I, I put these mistakes to do because, you know, if you notice that I start, you know, by exploring the background knowledge, okay, that you know about your ultrasound results, you know, but I intended to miss this very important question, which is why <laughs> you want to have a vaginal delivery, okay? Because that's that's the key for this station, by the way. Very because, simple. Yes. 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 Simply, I, this is the key. <laughs> this is what is meant by patients' concerns. You are asking yeah. why you are uh, insisting for vaginal delivery. Okay. Also, Please, I am in, I am intended to miss the the blood group. You know, in the history, while it's very important because. When you discuss the management or the external cephalic version, you have to mention to the patient, if she's RH negative, that she needs an anti-D to be given, okay? So that's also one of the important background knowledge uh, which should be given in the, the station. Also, I'm, I intended to you know ask multiple questions at the same time, by the way. Like I said, do you have vaginal bleeding and tummy pain? And so that's also not a, a reasonable way when you deal with the patient. Okay, she might not be able to follow you when you ask her multiple questions in the same time. Okay, exactly. and like Dr. <laughs> Dr. Muhammad said also that yes, I, I intended to start in a wrong way. I, I started with the disadvantages of the method she wants. Despite that, we have a very you know good intervention here or procedure, which is the external cephalic virgin, which will balance between you know uh, uh, the risk of planned vaginal preach vaginal delivery and also with the benefit of vaginal delivery because if we are successful in turning the baby upside down you know to become head first then she will gain the benefit of a vaginal delivery without these much complications with the planned vaginal preach delivery so, so this yes exactly so can we do it again in a good way helmi can you do this for me, please? And I will be a, a smiley, happy, cooperative Lisa Green, if you did well. So let's show <laughs> them the ideal way. Okay. Hello, I'm Dr. Mohammed, the SD5 in the clinic for today. May I confirm your name and age, please? Hi, doctor. My name is Lisa Green. I'm 25. And how would you like me to call you? Lisa. Lisa's fine. Thank you. Okay, Lisa, I understand from your notes that this is your first pregnancy. You are 36 weeks pregnant. You just did an ultrasound and you are wishing for a vaginal delivery. Am I correct? 
Exactly, exactly. This is my first pregnancy, and it's really wanted pregnancy as well, planned one. And uh, I'm, I'm really interesting and concerned about the vaginal delivery. I need it like natural birth. Okay, may I ask you first if you have an idea about your ultrasound results? Yes, uh, he told me that my baby's bought first, and I think this is a, the uh, abnormal position of my baby inside my womb. And uh, I, I heard uh, that it, it may be not suitable for vaginal delivery, but I'm really interested in. Okay, so any particular reason that you are concerned a lot with having a vaginal delivery? Yeah, yeah, oh my God. You know, I just would like to avoid the cesarean section. And my sister, she had a cesarean section six months ago and she was a very bad experience. She, her, her wound was infected and she suffered a lot for two months with an open tummy. It was a really horrible time and she was readmitted to theater for resuturing. I'm really shocked from this and I, I'm in need to avoid all of these problems. Oh, okay, Lisa, I'm so sorry to hear that about your sister and um, I really understand your concerns. Yeah. Uh, 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 but can I ask you a few questions to know more about you? Then we can discuss all your concerns. Absolutely, yes. So I need to know if you have any current complaints like vaginal bleeding? No, no, uh, I, it's, uh, you know, straightforward pregnancy and no nothing at all problems. Okay, so I can see from your notes that uh, uh, your antenatal care was uh, uneventful. You have normal blood tests, normal scanning. So are you aware of your blood group? Yes, it, it's uh, A negative. Okay, so otherwise you are fit and well? I think so. Do you have any kind of surgeries before? Uh, yeah, I had a pentectomy when I was 15 years old. And do you have any kind of drug allergy? Uh, no. Okay, do you have enough support at home, Lisa? Yeah, I'm living with my partner, uh, my boyfriend, I mean, and he's very supportive, by the way. That's great, and thank you for sharing your information. And coming to your concern, yes, as you know from the ultrasound that your baby's bottom comes first, and this occurs towards the end of pregnancy in three to four in 100 uh, women, and Usually it's a matter of a chance, but there are some factors which may lead to this position, like being having a first pregnancy, or sometimes if the placenta is low lying, which is called placenta previa, having too much or too little fluid around the baby or having more than one baby, okay? Uh-huh, yeah, I can follow you, yeah. Yes, okay, so at this situation, we have some options to discuss together, okay? So I know- so do you think that the vaginal delivery is impossible or a bad option? No, I don't. That's not, of course, a bad option. We can discuss the option of a vaginal delivery. And of course, I know that's a reasonable option for you because it's safe for you, I know. And yeah. we have one option, which is called external cephalic version, what's, which is a maneuver which can be done from 36 to 37 weeks onward, okay? And here, the healthcare professional can apply gentle pressure on your abdomen to try to turn the baby to the head first position. Oh my God, this is the first time to hear about this. So is it successful by the way? Yes, external cephalic version is successful in 50% of women, okay? And of course, uh, the chance of success can be increased by injecting a medicine to relax the muscles of your womb, okay? This medicine is safe for you and your baby, but it can make you feeling somehow flushed or aware of your heartbeats. Am I clear so far? Y yes, but it's, I think, acceptable side effects. Am I right? Yes, it's acceptable, of course. Okay. 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 Yes, this, in, in this maneuver, we are going to do an ultrasound scan before the maneuver to confirm that your baby's bottom is first. Then after that, we are going to confirm by an ultrasound again that the baby's head now first also are going to monitor the heartbeat, the heartbeats of your baby before and after the maneuver. And okay, the, the, the procedure is occasionally painful, but if you feel severe pain, the healthcare professional will stop immediately. And if it's not successful, we can try in another day. 
Uh, yeah, fair enough. That's that's nice idea. So uh, if it's successful, so I can go for a vaginal delivery. But if not successful, what should we do? Yes, if not successful, then we have two options. The first is to have a planned cesarean section or a planned vaginal preach delivery. A planned vaginal preach delivery seems safe for you, but it carries a very small risk to your baby. Okay, it carries okay. some risk having your baby die around the time of delivery. Also, there are maybe some short-term complications, but there is no long-term complications with that. Okay? Yeah. Okay, regarding the bland cesarean section, of course, it will be safer for your baby, but as a surgery, you know, bland cesarean section will carry some risk in the future pregnancies related to the placenta and also regarding the... Uh, uh, repeated cesarean section and increase in the still birth rate. Am I clear so far? Yeah, now I'm confused. Uh, I can't, you know, take a proper decision regarding the vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. I'm really confused. Yes, okay. The, we don't, we, you don't have to rush in taking the decision. You can take some time to discuss with your partner, okay, about the decision. And also I can arrange a further appointment for you with the consultant to discuss, okay? And also I can, I can give you a patient information a little bit about the ma different management options for preach presentation. Am I yeah. there so far? Yeah, that's great, doctor. Thank you so much. Okay, do you need to ask me any kind of questions again? No, no, it's, it's crystal clear, thank you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Now, I think uh, the difference between the two stations is really obvious for all of you, my dear friends. I think so. Or everybody in the room, I think you can realize the differences clearly between the first performance and the second performance. If, if we took the comparison in, in the form of domains, the information gathering and the patient safety was really improved and clear in the second performance in comparison to the first one. Communication with a patient uh, um, is also professional in the second performance in comparison to the first performance when the, with the, when the Dr. Helmi uh, uh, pretending to show anxiousness and um, not fully concentrating on the um, uh, uh, the target and the concern of the patient dealing lightly with her fears and even not discovering what is beyond the station. And in the applied clinical knowledge, I believe that the superficial knowledge given in the discussion were, were more than enough to cover the important points. So I suggest if you, if, if anybody, have any uh, uh, comments, but I suggest most of you will be happy to give pass to the second candidate and to give fail with no regret to the first candidate. However, this is the, uh, yes, Aisha is, is supporting my opinion. That's great. You will be a great examiner one day, Aisha. <laughs> because your judgment is great. So regarding the communication with the patient and relatives, I think offering PIL is a good option. Language, easy, avoid jargons, you know, uh, checking pre-existing knowledge about the ECV and check patients understanding, easy, effective communication, all of them were provided. In the applied clinical knowledge, the evidence-based knowledge about ECV and breach delivery risks, uh, even planned one. Negotiation skills on knowledge background and discuss plan of knowledge clearly including ECV trial with some details. Of information gathering, the ops history is important. Drug allergy sometimes is important as well. And exploration, why she is not want cesarean section or insisting on vaginal delivery and exactly this is what happened i suggest in this at this level of uh question if the patient shows some psychic trauma 
it will be really appreciated if you offered her urgent psychological appointment or psychosexual, uh, sorry, psychological counselor. Patient safety, ability to identify patient's concerns. And this is really related to the vaginal delivery insisting option. Gives options and discuss pros and cons of cesarean section versus vaginal delivery. And this is what happened exactly, in, but in a very professional, superficial manner. Discuss possible complications, maybe. Elicits and documents if the patient had allergy. For example, I, I said no allergies, but maybe in the other scenario or in this scenario, it has some allergies. So simply, this is the difference between the good performance and bad performance. And you can yourself choose what would you like to be in the exam, either to be like any candidate attending the exam and doing copy paste actions from all people. So you are in the borderline phase, you may pass, you may fail, or to change, to, uh, uh, to, to, to change your mind towards the practice and to act appropriately according to each scenario to show the examiner and people around you how much you are competent and how much you understanding every single scenario separately away from memorizing recalls or doing the same rubbish act. This is what we are believing in when we are preparing for part three. And uh, this is what Helmi and me and all the team of MedExam are working on. And TD also to be told, of course, if the patients are H negative, like exactly in the scenario, the patient should be offered anti D if she this, went for. This was my mistake. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. But, it, but I want to say something. Yes. Yes. You won't, you won't get, you know, you know, the 100%, but you have, you know, uh, when you like get 90%, 95%, that's, that will make you pass the, the station. And that reminds me also of a very important advice, you know, Dr. Muhammad, that in your exam, you have to consider that the 14 stations are 14 separate exams. Don't make one station performance to affect another one. So if you feel that, you know, have performed some, some way bad in one station, don't make this, you know, affect the next station. Forget completely about the previous one. Try to focus in the other one, okay? Absolutely right, Helmi. Mm -hmm. And let me say something very important. We are not aiming to pass. We are aiming to avoid fail. This is a yes. very big difference, okay? I'm not preparing myself to give one, to, to, to gain 100% in each station, which is impossible. Impossible, okay? So... I just would like to avoid any fail in any domain. If you have no fails in any domain, you will pass straight forward, okay? This is very important. Now, another thing, if you tried yourself to do this station third time, fourth time, you will remember something and miss something. That's why this is the human being nature. So yes. that's why examiners are instructed for global evaluation. What is the difference between the old version of MRCUG 2B exam, OSCE, and the new version of the exam after 2016? The difference is mainly summarized in one sentence. There is no checklist to take by the examiner. The examiner has the right for global evaluation. So help me miss psychological counselor. Help me miss NTD with ECV. But globally, he did well. The rule player were happy and the lay examiner most probably will be happy. So the examiner will be happy and everyone will be happy. He will pass even if missed something, okay? Because this is human nature, no perfection in any station. Is there any station if not passed, then 
I failed exam, even if I passed in all other stations. Isra, it is not, uh, you know, it is not a criterion reference test. Okay, it means that it's not like if I gain more than 60%, I will pass. If less than 60%, I will fail. It's not like this. It's a curve. Okay, so no one can tell you how many stations you will fail if you failed in how many stations you still have the chance to pass. Nobody can say that. What we will say is, I need to do a good performance just to avoid failure as much as I can. So I will increase my chances for a pass, okay? But overall, overall, let me reassure you, one failed station overall, most probably will not affect your mark. But two stations failed, it's really dangerous, really dangerous, okay? I mean in station of emergency. Is there any station, if not, if you, if, if there, is there any station, if not pass, then I failed exam, even if I passed in all other stations. No, not like this. No, no, no. Now, Isra, in, in previously up to two, th I got my, I got your question. <laughs> I got your question. Um, it's up to 2018. Yes. The examiner has the right to put um, uh, an asterisk point on your paper and then your exam almost finished. If you did a major mistake, okay? Actually, it happened with me myself in 2016, okay? But after 2018, this rule is not anymore used each station is managed separately. And then collectively, the marks will be evaluated either pass, fail, borderline. So there is no one mistake leads you to fail the exam, not anymore. But yes, it was before 2018. I got your question. So this is the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as you can. Thank you so much, Dr. Helmi, for your extraordinary effort in this station, in this session. And thank, thank you, you everyone, everyone name by name for joining us in this uh, uh, session. Despite the weekend, I, I, I know most of you have plans in the weekend. So just one and a half hour, we enjoyed a lot. And I hope all success, happiness, health to all of you. And go with your families, enjoy your weekend. And we will keep moving like this all together until fulfilling part three MRCUG exam and uh, uh, ensuring that all of you passed and being dear colleagues in the college. Helmi, would like to add anything? Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad. It was a pleasure and honor to join you in this session. I really enjoyed it too much. And you remembered me of the exam. I had some <laughs> tachycardia. While I this. <laughs> you know, you know, it, it's really important to say that. Yeah. Uh, anxiety is normal. But yes. fear is abnormal. So <laughs> anxiety, mild tachycardia, mild sweating before the exam is acceptable because this is the human nature being. Yes. But fear, like severe tachycardia, cold extremities, shock-like stage, and mental block furtherly is absolutely wrong. You will lose a lot, okay? So yes. I can accept your anxiety, Helmi, but never <laughs> fear. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining me and Dr. Helmi. I'm really proud to be with all of you. Have a nice day and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.